it's Michael from Doom and Darkness, bring you another battle report, and today it's my corn, that's right, my corn, against the Rise of the Doom Bull and his, um, well, Beast of Chaos again. So, first time playing corn, like I said in my uh, last live stream, it's a work in progress, some partially painted models, but um, should be good. What's the, what are we playing? Who knows, it's called Rising Power. Rising Power is the, um, I don't even know what they're called, the battle plan. Uh, let's go take a look. So um, this is my army. Uh, we're running Slaughterborn as my tribe. So basically all the mortals, if I roll an eight or higher uh, on the charge, I'm gonna get always strikes first, which is nice. Uh, it also lets me take um, these guys as my um, battle line. I can't remember the name of my- Skull Reapers. That's what they're called. Uh, lets me take Skull Reapers as, um, as battle line. And uh, yeah, I'm just trying a, a bit of a mix of everything this time and see what works. So for the general, we've got the Bloodthirster of Unfettered Fury. He's a fire, firebrand for his uh, command trait. So he is a priest and he's got um, Killer Instinct as his prayer. So that's the um, prayer that's gonna let him oh, make something, make a move in the hero phase. But he's also got the Halo of Blood, so that's gonna give him Oi Strikes first. Uh, we've got the Blood to Crater with the Banner of Blood, so that's going to give everything uh, re-rolls to charge. One Slaughter Priest with Bronze Flesh, another Slaughter Priest with the Blood Sacrifice, which is going to let me generate Blood Tithe points, which would be sweet. Two units of uh, Skull Reapers, uh, Skull Reapers, Skull Crushers, Mighty Skull Crushers, two up arm save, uh, can't wait to give them a go. One unit of Wrathmongers, I just kind of uh, had a spare 140 odd points and um, need to slot something in. Uh, the two units of Skull Reapers and then 20 Blood Warriors as well. Can't wait to give these boys a go. So I'm at 1970. How many are you at, Rise? Uh, 1900. Oof. Right. Okay, so I'm not getting my Triumph. But um, yeah, that's the army. I've got a Warlord Battalion as well. So it's going to give me an extra command point when I when I want it. And also the, um, you know, extra, extra items. So that's my army. Let's go take a look at the rise of the Doom, the Doom Bull. Take us through your army, sir. Uh, I've got a Doom Bull as the general. Um, I'm in sub-fraction Ball Herd again. Doom Bull's got um, Bestial Cunning and the Slitherrack Helm. Uh, so he will be uh, able to give um, fights, strikes last on a two plus when he charges. Um, and he'll be able to bring one unit in uh, seven inches away um, anywhere on the board. Um, then I've got two Great Brace Shamans, um, one with Tendrils of Atrophy, one with Vicious Strangle Thorns, um, two units of six Bulgore with uh, two hand weapons, two units of ten Gore, and a unit of twenty Umbral Raiders. The Gorgon is a Gorgon this week. In the okay, of, uh, instead of a Cycle yeah. last week. So. The only change is you've got Gorg instead of the side Gore, yep. and, and 10 less. to drop 10 uh, Gore because the points for Bulgore and Doom Ball uh, went up. Yep. Um, and we'll see if the Gorgon likes to swallow Skull Reapers and whatever your other yeah, mortal Mix it up with my corn boys. And then heal a bit back after he chomps them down. I reckon uh, a Gorgon would look cool in my list, actually. Yeah. I reckon that would be fitting. Maybe. Um, and are you still a one drop? I am, yes. Okay, cool. Uh, we'll go roll off for, this is what the table looks like, five objectives, terrain around the place. Uh, we'll go roll off a table size, sides, we'll come back after right, deployment. So after deployment, this is what it looks like. The good thing about this army is I don't really care what dies like my ogres, so I can kind of just put stuff everywhere, but um, five objectives on the board and I just want to go after them. He's one dropped his whole army in uh, ambush, uh, ready to come on and do nasty things to me. And uh, this is how we've set up, so just some, um, Skull Reapers here at the back just hanging out. I don't know what they'll do, but they might do something. Uh, skull Crushers up the front, ready to charge out the flanks, take all the objectives. And of course, we have a mighty horde of uh, Blood Warriors in the middle. Slaughter Priest for support, Blood's Creator for support. Some Wrathmongers just being crazy, don't even know what they're doing there, but they'll end up somewhere. Uh, and uh, another Priest ready to mount the throne uh, when it's his turn. Bloodthirster, ready to just go all Lord of the Rings, Balrog on everyone's face. So uh, Rise of the Doom Bulls given me the first turn. So I'm gonna go first and try and take all these objectives. Do we roll now to see which objectives counts as two? We do, yeah. So all right. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So that's the middle one. Middle one, it counts as two. All right, let's go. Um, 
Blades of Corn. Right, so the end of Corn Blade One. Uh, here, Blade One. Uh, Hero phase. What did we do? Well, we got um, Killer Instinct off with our Bloodthirster and made our um, Skull Crushers get a free move. So they shot up the board there. Um, we got Bronze Flesh off. We put it onto our Bloodthirster because uh, Rise is about to come on and ambush and shoot and do all sorts of stuff. And I'm pretty sure he's going to kill that guy if he can. Um, then we also got off, we generated a blood tithe by murdering one of our blood warriors. So uh, I'm up on one blood tithe. And then apart from that, we just moved up and took the objectives for the most part. Uh, so I took these two objectives, uh, ran my um, skull crushers up onto uh, Ryze's home objective, I'll call it that. And uh, yeah, just shuffled and moved my stuff around. In my brilliance, of course, I forgot to like take this objective, but such is life. And um, Really didn't put too much thought into what we did here. We just thought, let's go and get the fighting happening. Blood Warriors on the center objective, and uh, ready to punch some face. And apart from that, that's it. So the end of, uh, this is the objective that counts as more as well. At the moment, the center one. So at the moment, uh, I hold one, two, three, four, and more. And uh, what's that, three points? Yep. yep, three points as we go into Rise the Doom Balls, turn one, and it's uh, ambush time, right, folks. So at the end of the movement phase, this is what it looks like. You may have spotted the dead slaughter priest. Right, that's right. The um, uh, evil great Bray Shaman used his Rituals of Ruin, did five mortal wounds to my slaughter priest, and uh, did one to himself. And then the sneaky Ungors with their off-table shot poured through another six wounds onto him. Um, and yeah, that's sad, but guess what? More blood tithe points, so that puts me on two. Um, and then movement phase, he's only just brought on these two units in ambush. So one unit of gauze with a Bray Shaman over there on the left, and then uh, some bull gauze nine inches away from me. That looks like he's he's ambushing my mighty skull crushers and um, he's falling exactly into my trap because this is exactly what I wanted him to do. So uh, we're going to resolve these charges when he makes the mistake of getting in combat with me and um, come back and have a look at it then. Right, so after the charge phase and combat, this is what it looks like. So the, for, the, for the first time, on the first time that Rise of the Doom Bull comes in to ambush me, he fails a charge, he re-rolls it with a command point and he fails again. So there's Minotaurs stuck out of combat, but the glorious Glorious goat face bastards over here. They make the charge roll a big 10, get in. Give me always strikes last, that wouldn't have mattered anyways, but put it on me. And then put a whopping four wounds through onto the uh, skull crushers. My dice are, are letting me down. Um, I attacked back and uh, got two, I got, I killed two gore. That's it, with my, my two skull crushers to kill two gore. And um, he just brought them back in the end of the battle shot phase. So he's going to take that objective off me. So you're gonna score one point. one point for having one objective. And um, that's the end of turn one. So we get to roll off for the initiative now. Have you already put your thought into whether or not you're gonna take it or not? Oh, some, not so, no, <laughs> right, really. what I think. One, two, three, go. And I got a six. Um, have you put enough thought into it? What are you gonna do? Well, I don't really care if you have the double turn or not. Uh, I haven't put any thought into it at all, so I'll make a decision. Right, folks. So, uh, well, uh, Rise of the Doom Bull on the double turn, and uh, what does he do? Well, firstly, he uses his Ritual of Ruin, Ruin called yeah. the... Uh, called Warping Curse. Called Warping Bullshit of the game, and just does six mortal wounds straight to my um, Slaughter Priest and murderizes him, which means Blood Tithe Point. I'm now on three. Um, then after that, we go into the movement phase and he tries to get a Mystic Shield off onto the Gore over here and he fails. And then it's movement for, turn, uh, movement phase and all of his stuff has to come onto the board. So we've got Sneaky Ungore here in the, on the board edge, going to shoot up my uh, Skull Reapers. Um, 10 unit of Gore, they're going to get sacrificed to the Blood God, I can guarantee you that. And then this, uh, this Bray Shaman over here for support. Uh, on the other side of the board, he's coming at me from two sides, folks. We've got um, George the Gorgon come onto the table, wants to mix it up with some Skull Reapers, and then up the back, he really hates these mighty Skull Crushers because the Doom Bull and the other unit of uh, Bull Gores are ready to make mincemeat out of them. So 
Uh, that is, well, actually, you, it's not the end of the movement phase because you can move those guys if you wanted to. Oh, uh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, yeah. he'll just move those up and get them uh, ready to smash me. And then uh, we'll do the charges uh, or shooting and then uh, charges. So I'll show you what it looks like. Right, after so that. shooting, uh, Ungor opened up with a thousand dice and um, got three, five wounds through to me. And I actually put uh, all out defense onto these guys as well. So four up base, um, three up because they're in cover. All out defense takes them to a two up. Um, but I reckon he got 17 wounds through to me and uh, still got five through there. So uh, Ungor Raiders are, are good. Um, over here, uh, Bulgore's got the big charge in and got six mortal wounds through on the charge, so that killed my banner bearer, my musician who was on one wound, and just leaves the champion alone against the uh, goat faced bastards. And over here, the big news the uh, Gorgon made a 10 inch charge and got in to my Skull Reapers, so just snuck his little back of his base around and tagged that objective. And uh, we're gonna brawl it up over here. So, uh, Rise the Doom Bull, we're going to combat and. Um, yeah, maybe I can put some some damage on his bulgors if he fights with the Gorgon first. Right, folks, so after combat, uh, this is what it looks like. So this Gorgon came in, um, rolled three four pluses for his Slytherin Moor and just ate three of my Skull Reaper straight up. That was terrible. Um, and then the Slicing bay Blades just like absolutely chopped the last two guys up. So another Blood Tithe for me, putting me on four. And over here, yet yeah, we had no chance against uh, that onslaught. So uh, champion did get to attack first and put any wounds through. Sorry, say that again. Did my champion put any wounds on your ball? Uh, put one through, yeah. One wound through, and then uh, he got slaughtered as well. So I'm on five blood tithe points, which is glorious. Uh, as we go, and that's what it looks like as we go into um, Blades of Corn turn two. Yep. And for objective wise, you score one and two but not more. So what's the score now? Uh, I'm on three, you're on two. Correct. Yep, great. All right, let's go, Blaze of Corn. So this is what it looks like um, after, well, hero phase and then movement and um, just before charges. So what did we do? Well, the first thing we got a little bit clever. We used our killer instinct um, prayer onto these Skull Reapers that were here, uh, just to get them about four inches away from this Ungor. I didn't want to charge them and have him unleash hell on me, so uh, we got them four inches away with Killer Instinct, and then we used a Blood Tithe Point to move them D6 and uh, push them into combat, uh, denying that. We also then used moved um, our Skull Reapers, and I think we moved, what else did we move? We moved our Blood Warriors up a little bit as well. Uh, movement phase, Blood Crushers just come down, three away from those Gore, ready to charge. And um, we moved our Wrathmongers and our Bloodthirster combined to come take care of this Gorg. And I could have put everything into these Blood Warriors and um, moved them and then Blood Tithe them and then whipped them and got them across into there. But um, I'm not sure I'm ready for that just yet. And if I lose the turn, it could be disastrous. So I think I just want to take care of some stuff on the battlefield first and then we'll go from there. So that's what it looks like. Um, just about to do shooting, I'm going to whip this guy and then we're going to uh, get our charges in and see how we go. I'm Slaughter Tribe, whatever they're called, so any 8 plus on a charge will be Oil Strikes first. Uh, these guys are on 3d6. Um, yeah, we'll get it done, resolve it, and come back and I'll show you right, So end of the combat phase, and um, let's start off over here. So the um, Skull Reapers went in, killed 14 of the 20 Ungor, uh, which was sad, and um, he auto-passed Battleshock with a command point, and then Battleshock phase rallied D3 plus 3, yep. brought 4 back. Um, so I really wanted to kill those guys and get the Blood Tithe point, but it's fine. The Mighty Skull Crushers did kill all the gore, so they um, got 6 impact hits, mortal wounds on the charge, which was glorious, and then finished the rest off, chopped off all their little heads with their axes, skulls for the skull thrown, another Blood Tithe point, put me back up onto 5. Over here though, this is the big, the big news, the big disaster, so... Um, we got a big 14 inch charge with the Wrathmongers, which gave him always strikes first. We piled in attack with the um, Bloodthirster and he put through quite a lot of wounds. Our poor Gorgon only had like a handful of wounds le left. Wrathmongers then attacked and I didn't spend a command point to all out attack them because I'm not used to having so many command points and just handing it out. And, uh, and they did basically nothing really. And he just put um, just a couple of wounds through to him and he was still alive. So he turned around and ate one, which healed him up 
And then he turned around and just went ham with his claws and killed another two. So um, I did get uh, some mortal wounds through to him again from him rolling ones. And then I did a, um, a murder roll mortal wound back to him as well. So two mortal wounds back to him, but killed three Wrathmongers, which is sad. I just really needed him, him dead um, because he might win the initiative now and I don't want to be stuck in combat here. But um, that's what it looks like there. Um, I use a, a, a what do you call them? Command point to auto pass just my Wrathmongers just because I just didn't want to mess with it. And that's what we looked like. So five blood tithe, um, the, as far as objectives go. Oh, he also just killed me off the objective. So that's sad, but I control one, two, and three, which is more. And uh, so that's another three for me. So it's six, two, two, two. Um, and we're gonna roll off for turn three and I'm going for the double turn. So let's go. I got a one, got a one. So I get to pick, right? Folks, I can't remember if it, when we did that priority roll just then I said that, um, uh, I had it or not, but uh, Rise of the Doom Bull definitely has it. So, turn three, Rise of the Doom Bull, and um, yeah, Hero Phase and so forth. Come back and have a look okay. at it. So, end of Rise of the Doom Bull, turn three, Hero Phase. We did some blood, blood tithe shenanigans, so I thought we'd better just record it. First thing, his shaman did the um, D6 mortal wound ritual again, did one wound to himself, six mortal wounds to my Skull Reapers, so that was horrible. Um, and then. I don't think he really did anything else. Tried to generate some command points and failed. I got one on my uh, Bloodthirster over here. And then end of his hero phase, we went in for the Blood Tithe shenanigans. So the first thing we did, we spent four command points to activate my Bloodthirster to finish off the Gorgon. That generated another command point, leaving me on two. We spent that for uh, Murder Lust. And I tried to, I wanted to move these, uh, these guys into combat here, just so I made sure I finished them in his turn. I rolled a one for the movement, which was terrible. And then over here, I chose these other two units. I just wanted to move them back to make that charge as hard as possible for his bull gores. Um, rolled a one on my Bloodthirst for distance as well. Got a good roll on the uh, Wrathmongers though. Had one command point left and doubled up, used it again. Um, we can't find anything that says we can't at the moment. So uh, spent it again, same three units. And this time got the Skull Crushers into combat. So. Uh, that's awesome. That's the end of the hero phase. Kind of spent it was expensive blood tithe point wise, but I'm pretty happy with it because it's a, a much more difficult charge now. Lose Bulgore into my Thurster, and um, and hopefully, yeah, he's only got the option to go into my Blood Warriors, which is exactly where I want him. So we'll go into the movement and then the charge phase. We'll come back have a look. So at this that. is what it looks like after the um, or hero phase, and um, I reckon I feel like I've done hero phase already, but uh, hero phase and um, uh, movement phase just before charges so uh, we did actually do my blood tithe before he'd finished all his spells so we went back he did a spell and actually pushed another wound through to my skull reapers finished one off that was wounded and then uh, he's do, used a, or he's, he's retreated and ran here and he snuck his sneaky little ungor out of combat with me and around and stole on this back objective so uh, good beast of chaos play there um, over here, he's moved his gore up as a screen to my Blood Warriors, and then he's uh, spent a command point to make these bull gore run six. They've got a ability on his Dooble, which makes them charge in, um, uh, when do they charge? They charge in the, oh, in the They have to charge phase. in the charge phase or in the combat phase. The combat so, phase, yeah. um, but his run normally wouldn't let him charge, but because it's the outer phase and the ability says they must, must charge, he can basically run them and then get a charge as well. So he's gonna try and get that charge there into the Bloodthirster. And then um, these Bulgore, I guess, are just sitting here as a, a bit of a backup. So uh, that's all good and fine. Let's um, let's see how this plays out. You gonna roll that charge now? That's really all good uh, Let's get it on camera, let's see what happens. Praying for double ones. Four, I reckon that's what I need. Four. It's pretty tight though. Four. I reckon uh, four is within half within, an inch, mate. Yeah. Bang. Hit me with your with your with your, your zesty horns. Folks, we just we just realised then that um, you know because we're still learning and stuff that I could have just redeploy here when he does that move. We sort of were all like, oh, you know, he's pushing this and getting it to make the charge and stuff like that. So I guess technically I could just have redeployed now with a command point because I have like three and um, just try to get myself out of there and be nice and safe. But I'm not going to. We're going to just let him get in there and have a fight and we'll have some fun. But um, I guess in 
the next battle report, I'll be redeploying that in that situation for sure. So uh, lesson learned, but um, let's fight. So, well, this is what it looks like after combat. And I'll tell you what, my I was regretting not doing that, um, that move for sure because he came in and put six mortal wounds on me on the charge. I struck first, um, did uh, 12 wounds. I reckon, which is fine. Like I'm pretty happy with this guy's fighting ability, and then um, and then he attacked back. He wasn't out of command point, so he couldn't all out attack, and he was negative one from uh, my negative negative one uh, ability, and um, yeah, he only put four mortal wounds through me rolling sixes. Two was from his axes. Two was from his horns. Believe it or not, so uh, I'm alive, but I've taken ten wounds of my bloodthirster, which is um, bad. Uh, I need to start healing if I can, which I think I can. So. Um, that's cool. So the end of Rise of the Doom Bulls, turn three, and um, he is going to score. You have this objective, you have that objective, and you have this, so that's three. Um, I have this one, and I have the one that counts as two, so I'm on a three. Yep. So you have two, two yep. to four. and to, two, I'm on six. You're on six, yep. yep. I go to four. Oh, you go to up to four. All right, and we go into Corn turn three. So end of corn turn three, and it was a bloody round of always strikes first slaughter. So basically, um, everything that charged except for my wrathmongers here um, rolled greater than an eight. So everything was an always strikes first. My skull crushers over here, my skull reaper, um, my blood warriors over here, and then naturally the bloodthirster has the um, always strikes first from the halo. Um, so the bloodthirster killed the 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 bull gores, which I was kind of worried about, and then everything else just killed everything else. So the ungors and the shaman here, dead, and the gore unit you know, over there, dead as well. So that put me up onto four blood tithe point from uh, the murder. And at the end of this turn three, I have one, two, and that's the major one. So that's more. So it gives me another three points. So nine to four. Yep. And then we go into turn three, no, turn four, and we're rolling for the double turn. Look at that. Come on, Blood Warriors, let's go. Double turn. Oh no, I feel bad. I've got a three. I'm taking the turn, Pete. So, uh, well, what, I don't even know what we did in the hero phase. We didn't really do much because um, anything I did try to do, we couldn't really do it. But I failed my prayer to make myself move, um, but we've just moved in um, with my... Blood Warriors, push them right up, um, got an eight inch charge in, so they're gonna be uh, striking first. Bloodthirst is charged in. Uh, I'm gonna plant the banner with the Blood Secretor, so everything's gonna get plus one attack. Ran up the Wrathmongers, so they're gonna give my Bloodthirst a plus one attack as well. And uh, the rest of the stuff is just shuffled around. And um, yeah, it's really just about murdering. I would've liked to try and get the Doomball's head, but he's uh, finest hour and um, I think we're just going to kill these unit of, of, of Bulgore. I think we're probably just going to call them dead instead of rolling all those dice, I feel like, to um, rise the Doom Bull. But uh, you want me to kill them or you want to... Yeah, you take them off. I'm going to go uh, back to fence them and see if I can... See if you can survive? survive it. Oh, I'm going to smash them then. Uh, all right, we'll come back and I'll show you all the game. So after combat, well, uh, this is what it looks like. So it's a whole bunch of dead Bulgors. Um, I think the Blood Warrior's got about 14 wounds through and um, the bloodthirst of maybe just as many. Um, those dead blood warriors, you can see over there is actually from his doom bull. Um, I tagged it in the combat and uh, he actually chopped me up, went ham, finest hour, end all out attack and um, put nine wounds through to me. So that's terrifying. Uh, he's fought himself out of combat because he wants to try and like charge into my bloodthirst and kill me. But um, going into his turn, I've got five, six blood tithe points. So I'm actually gonna Blood Tithe move into combat with him in his turn and then Blood Tithe spend the other four to fight and try and kill him because I'm winning and I just want to deny all his fun in revenge. So I think that's what we're going to do unless there's some way he can uh, get around it. But that's the end of my turn four. Um, I score all of the objectives and um, yeah, just winning on points by a mile. So. Now it's just to claim the bull of the, the head of the bull and get my uh, ultimate battle tactic. What do you call that? Grand strategy. So let's go. Rise of the Doom Bull, turn four. Got anything to do in the hero phase? Uh, oh, yeah, I can do a mortal wound. 
um, knife myself and do some mortal wounds to you. Okay, all right, let's do that. So Rise of the Doombull's turn and check out these shenanigans. So I spent a, a blood tithe point to move my uh, my units into combat here within my Bloodthirster. And my Blood Warrior is thinking, chortle, chortle, I get to always strikes first in the, uh, in the combat phase. And then he retreats out of combat. I uh, get three inches away from my Bloodthirster, used his command ability, and now he's going to charge me for the impact hits in, uh, in the charge phase. And if I get the uh, um, Slytherin Helm's ability off, last. and then that will mean we strike at the same time. Does it just go off automatically, or is it a two plus? It's a two up, yeah. Oh, no, you might kill me. All right, so he's the first for the charge. <laughs> what? I've got Did one you... command point left. So. That's, that's so good. <laughs> Right, M7 gets it in. Yep. Um, I've taken nine wounds, I've only got seven left. And then I can't remember how his um, impact hits work. Right. It's, it's like slightly. not as good as the Bulgors, yeah, I seem to recall. Uh, yeah, so alpha charge. On a two up, it's D3 mortals. Alright, two up, it's D3 mortals, roll one. Yeah, that's uh, D3. D3. One. One. Puts me on ten. That's no good. And then does the uh, the helmet go off? Helmet goes off on a two plus. Yeah, I should have redeployed it. It does. <laughs> oh no, it always strikes last as well. That's no so, good. So that means I can strike first. Oh bro, we're putting the uh, we're putting our command abilities on. Okay. We're giving ourselves some defense. Okay. Let's go. All that defense. Yeah. So uh three to hit. At negative with one. His, with negative one because of my aura. So you um Fours. Oh, I'm so oh, scared right one. now. One no, no, you can't do it. Uh, three wounds. Yep, yeah, that does wound. Yep, so I've got negative a, three rend. A three up normally, so it goes to a six up. No, it fails. Three Damn. damage. Ooh, that's, that's good. You can get me. And I've taken 13 now, I've got three left. I've got to get two, two sixes, sixes with the horns. With the horns. You can do it. You want to go with six on those dice all the time. Come on, horns. Come on, don't do it. You'll do it. No, no, no both three. Oh, good. Does that mean I can kill you now? Yeah, you can. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'll if you'll be able to now. He's pretty, pretty wounded. Um, but let's go. You didn't drag the blood warriors in, did you? No. All right. So I'm I'm wounding on a thirteen wounds plus wounding on a four. So that's not good. Getting plus one attack from the wrathmonger still. So I'm on nine attacks, which is lovely. Uh, there we go. So. Hitting on a two still and wounding on a four. Nine attacks, another two. Get out of here ones. Wounding on a four. Look at all those wounds. Not as many as I need. So four at neg two. So I've got a four up naturally, but I'm in cover. So that goes to a three up. So well, you, don't, you don't get the cover if you charge into the cover. Don't you? No. Uh, so Good. take three. Oh yeah. I'm pretty sure I could be making that Three up. Or four, who knows? So that's going to be five wounds. Yep. And then end of the combat phase, I get my stomp. See if it happens. My fill aura four plus for D3 more wounds. Nope, doesn't happen. That's the end of turn four, right? Yep. So I'm alive and you're alive. And uh, we'll call it there yeah, and let the Doom Ball live for another day. Sounds good. All right, so that's, that's a good victory for me. I need to beat you once, mate. That's where you say, good job, Dan. It was well done. It was really well done. The, yeah. uh, um, like the, the blood tithe's really good. Really oh yeah, we, we, um, we so the guys, wrong, in the, the guys in the chat just said, you can't use uh, more than one blood tithe ability per turn. Um, and that's actually what the book says. It says at the end of hero phase, use one. You can use one of the abilities. So that turn where we doubled them up um, was a bit of a no-no, but um, that's okay, I think it was all one over here anyway. So anyways, that was all good. Just wanted to point that out. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Thumbs up, hope you enjoyed the report.